my name is Dr. Bob DiMaria, the drugless doctor, and today we are going to get to know a little bit more about your heart. Amazing, isn't it? That heart beeps 72 times per minute, 100,000 times per day. Do you ever think about the magnitude of what your heart is? Do you know the heart is made up of muscle? It's not mysterious. Muscle needs oxygen, muscle needs fuel. I'm going to talk to you a little bit today about the physiology, how the heart actually works. It's a pump. It has four chambers, four parts that have to push blood throughout your whole body. But you may not realize that a part of the pumping sends blood to your lungs. So what happens is, is the heart's going to send blood to your lungs and it's going to get more oxygen and it's going to release something called carbon dioxide. So your heart is pumping and it's going lub dub, lub dub, lub dub. Do you know what's causing the lub dub noises? It's the valves that are closing inside of your heart. So the valves are going to close so when the heart chambers contract, the blood's going to go out either to the rest of the body or it's going to go over to your lungs. Guess what? allows that heart muscle to function better. B vitamins, that's B as in Bravo by vitamins. Do you cry easy? Do you have a fear of impending doom? Do you have sore muscles when you exercise? If you said yes to any one of those three, what were they? Do you cry easy? Do you have sore muscles with exercise? Those are body signals to me that you need B vitamins. So you may be suffering right now with heart palpitations that you could literally feel the heart inside of your chest. Maybe it's because you need B vitamins. Because say, well, Dr. Bob, how do I lose my B vitamins? You lose B vitamins from stress, from eating sugar. Sugar and stress deplete the body of B vitamins. You really want your heart to be functioning at 100% all the time. I'm going to share a little nugget with you. Inside of my office, I have a very special piece of equipment called an acoustic cardiogram. We have an electronic stethoscope that we literally place over your chest in four different areas, and we can listen to the lub dub. Do you remember what I told you caused the lub dub noise? It's the muscles contracting, causing the valves to close. What made an impact on that muscle to contract? That's right, B vitamins. B is in Bravo, remember? Well, if you don't have enough B vitamins, what can happen is that heart is not going to contract sharply and you're going to actually have a hesitation of the heart sound. That's one of the ways that we can help determine what kind of nutritional need that you have for your body. So if somebody comes to my office and they cry easy and they're tired and they're sluggish, we just need to support them with some B vitamins. But most importantly is we need to teach and educate them to minimize or eliminate the sugar in their lives. Now, if you really crave sugar, we use an item in our office called chromium. Chromium helps take away the craving for sugar. Now, as I was mentioning to you about the acoustic cardiogram, and I'm going to share something with you very special right now, that the blood flows from the bottom of your feet up through the lower part of your trunk, through the liver, on the way to your heart. And if I have somebody that comes into the office and they have a larger abdomen, a big old belly, I have a chance that I believe they have congested liver. Now, I'm not trying to confuse you with a lot of different organs and glands, but the blood flows through your liver on the way to your heart. And we have found patterns on this acoustic cardiogram where the liver can actually congest the blood from flowing through and we see a little bit of hesitation inside of the heart closing of the valves. So we have actually improved our patient's heart health by helping them improve liver function. I always encourage our patients to eat Dr. Bob's ABCs half an apple every day, a third cup of beets, either raw, grated, or baked, and one medium or four or five baby carrots. 
that helps liver function. And when your liver is functioning optimally, I know that your heart is going to function optimally also. Now, I know that many of you are very concerned about family heart disease. Well, here's what I've learned over time. It's inflammation of the blood vessels around the heart that cause what we will call atherosclerosis. Now, that's a big word. That's A-T-H. You can say, well, Dr. Bob, why did you spell it A-T-H? Because there's another term called arteriosclerosis. Arterio is actually the hardening of the arteries. The athro is fat around the blood vessels inside of the heart arteries. What's the difference between the two? A lot has to do with what you're eating. Now, inflammation can be caused by sugar and trans fat. People who have a passion for junk food that has sugar in it or convenience foods that have lots of trans fat in it can actually have hardening of the arteries around the blood vessels, not only in their heart, but around the blood vessels in their brain. Do you consume a lot of fat? I don't promote red meat. Now, I'm not telling you never you can have red meat, but red meat can be quite fatty and it can also cause fattening around the blood vessels around your heart. Have you ever heard of a term called cysteine or homocysteine and you have your cysteine levels checked and you're concerned because those cysteine levels are high and you don't know what to do about it? Well, what we have found in our practice is that if you don't have enough B vitamins, B as in Bravo vitamins, your cysteine level will be elevated. We've also found that individuals who have a low thyroid gland may have also elevated cysteine levels. Quite frightening, but it's if you know about what you need to do and you could take some B vitamins, and we have products that we actually use in our office, some B vitamins that are pure and powerful that will help lower your cysteine levels by themselves without having to take any kind of medication. Let's talk a little bit about medications in the heart and what kind of supplementation should you use. Well, we encourage our patients to use olive oil. Olive oil is an omega-9 fat. Omega-9 fat helps the blood vessels to be subtle. That is S-U-B-T-L-E, subtle. And that whole subtle is uh, soft, not hard. It's more pliable and it's not going to be really rigid. So olive oil is really good. That's one of the reasons we also encourage our patients to eat avocados. Avocados also help blood vessels to be soft and pliable so that the blood can flow through smoothly. What we have also learned from our experience and we encourage our patients to use marine oil. We use anchovy oil and we use sardine oil. And the reason that we use those oils is because they don't have a lot of toxicity. Anchovy oil or anchovies are small fish and so are sardines and they're not really toxic. Like tuna oil, even salmon oil we're finding over time can be quite toxic because of the fat. I personally take a teaspoon of anchovy slash sardine oil every day to help take away the inflammation inside of my body. Now I'm going to share a nugget with you. Are you ready for this? We don't promote aspirins. Taking an aspirin a day is not healthy. You're tricking your body. I would much rather have you use olive oil or a marine based oil like anchovy oil or sardine oil. Those are going to help take away inflammation in your body. See, blood cells will stick together when there's inflammation and when you take an aspirin, that aspirin is going to help, it's going to trick your body, it's going to take away the inflammation, but it has bad effects. And a part of those bad effects is the fact that it could cause your blood to thin too much. That's why one of the reasons that we don't promote blood thinners, because blood thinners once again are tricking your body. I'd much rather have you use flax oil, avocados, eat, I personally eat a fourth of an avocado every day. I saute my food with olive oil and as I mentioned to you, I also take marine oil. Now let's talk a little bit more about what this heart's doing with the pumping. It pumps 
72 times per minute, 100,000 times per day. Obesity, what does that mean, Dr. Bob? Being overweight. Over half of the population in the United States today is considered obese. For every pound of fat that you have on your body, it adds, this is extra fat above your ideal BMI weight, which is your, your basal metabolic index, or your base metabolic index, it adds 200 miles of extra blood vessels. That means every time that that heart is pumping and pumping, and it has to push that blood through 200 extra miles of blood vessels, your heart's gonna get tired. And over time, it's gonna wear out. You want to work on minimizing and eliminating as much extra weight that you possibly can. That's very significant. Let me give you another little nugget. Our patients often ask me what side should they sleep on because they may have back pain. Well, you might not know, but your heart has a better side to sleep on. You always want to lay on your right side. The blood flows back into your heart on the right side of your heart, and you don't want to put any extra stress on your heart at all. Okay, so you know that you have a history of heart disease and you want to make some decisions of what you can do now to minimize or eliminate the heart disease in your body, well, I'm going to tell you, number one, is you want to eliminate cigarette smoking if you happen to do that. You want to, and this is very serious, minimize and eliminate sugar. Sugar depletes the body of B vitamins. Sugar causes inflammation. You want to eliminate trans fat or partially hydrogenated oils. And I know that you maybe have been told over time that you're supposed to use margarine. I'd much rather have you use butter. Butter is definitely healthier for you than margarine. I want you to exercise a little bit every day. If you cry easy, if you have a fear of impending doom, I want you to make sure that you're taking a good quality B vitamin. Yes, have your cholesterol level checked. If your cholesterol level is in the area of 240 or 250, which is quite high, it's not that you need a medication. You need to cut back on foods that cause inflammation. Sugar, trans fat, and heart disease happen to be those common foods. And probably one of the most common foods that I want you to minimize or eliminate from your life that I see almost all the time causes heart problems in our patients is ice cream. When we take x-rays of our patients' low backs, lumbar spines, from the side view, and I see calcification of that aorta, or that large tube in their abdomen, they always eat ice cream. Olive oil, avocados, flax oil, marine oil, minimize your sugar, minimize trans fat, make sure that you're having a good quality B vitamin, totally eliminate cigarette smoking. A couple veggies I'd encourage you to eat, red, yellow, or orange bell peppers. Great source of vitamin C that you could eat all year round because your blood vessels need to have repair. Vitamin C is a part of that repair. It helps the, um, the nutrients for the healing of the blood vessels themselves. And finally, as I mentioned to you at the beginning of the program, we want that liver to be functioning optimally. Make sure you're eating your half a red apple every day, your third cup of beets, and one medium or four or five baby carrots. If you start to feel your heart palpitating in your heart and your chest a little bit, make sure you're taking a B, enough B vitamins. Drink water. Water helps that blood flow freely throughout your body. Minimize and or eliminate aspirin. Always talk to your healthcare provider before you make that wise decision to do that. Don't be stressed out because stress is going to aggravate your heart and it's going to cause inflammation in your body. I really appreciate you joining me today. My name is Dr. Bob DiMaria. I'm the drugless doctor and I look forward to talking to you once again.